Hey guys, Ernie from Rally Support Direct here. You may already be wondering, where's enthusiastic Ernie? Where's eager Ernest? Where's Ernest Ernest? Well, unfortunately, today I am just a bad news bear. And what kind of bad news am I bearing? Well, all the land speed events for this year have been canceled. That is right, I figured I'd re-record the intro to this video and let you guys know sooner rather than just get this car ready and then blue ball you guys so yeah unfortunately while i was out at big northwest we got a noah's ark level of rainfall and as far as i know there's still standing water out on the salt flats so unfortunately that means we will not be able to make a record pass this year before i let you guys get to the fun stuff brief a little catch up of what's been going on since last episode well if you saw the ending of last episode you probably would have heard the horrible knocking sound coming from the driver's side abcs we tried a few quick fixes like swapping solenoids between the sides and no matter what we did it was still coming just from this side so we figured most more than likely a wiring issue we reached out to our wiring guy elias big big shout out to elias he really saved us um so he got that taken care of uh, he set up our dash, and voila, we're all pumped. Grabbed some 116 race fuel, and well, headed to the dyno. Well, at the dyno, we ran into a, another small little issue. No matter what the tuner was doing, either pulling fuel or dumping fuel, we were just getting a reading of 14.8 air to fuel ratio, which, you know, was really bad. Uh, we tried a new O2 sensor, it was still just reading 14.8. So, unfortunately, we had to pull the plug on the session. We pulled the session because, you see, trying to tune without an air fuel reading is kind of like trying to shoot at something while blindfolded. It just doesn't work. So after our failed session, we again reached out to Elias and huge shout out to him. He figured it out and then, well, I guess now you'll just have to watch and see. Shit, wow. Who's ready to inhale some leaded gasoline fumes? Because this guy sure is. Okay, so we're having a little bit of drive-by wire issues. It keeps dropping signal. So he's going to try and reset the whole thing, and if that doesn't work, we're going to have to trace the wire to make sure it's in there good. But yeah, besides that, we've made a whole 104 horsepower so far, so I guess so far so good. There you go, over there. It got so you. Trying to grab that drive-by wire. Uh huh. And it freaking, I touched the bell mouth, and the oh. the uh, wire was like that far away from the downpipe. Oh, okay. So I'm like, yeah, better better zip tie that up. Okay, well that that can explain some things.
220, oh. 90 foot pounds. He's got it up there now. I'm 100% on the, on the duty cycle at the gate. It's a super light problem all over again. No pressure then, huh? So, I wonder we have a boost. So, like, it makes 5 psi, okay. but zero, and 100% duty cycle makes about 10 and a half. Oh, wow. You usually get about two, two and a half to one, but. So, whatever spring is in there, like, we Too need soft. A, super soft. We need to set it up so it's like. 15 pound spring is the softest spring, and then I can control from there. Yeah. So, what are you doing here? Uh, we're adjusting the wastegate because we're not getting enough boost out of it, so we're going to tighten it up and cool. get a little bit more boost. We only made one more pound, so we're unplugging the wastegate and see what happens. Hey, third time's the charm though, right? <laughs> but I mean, one, 153, that's, on our way. yeah, and that's five pounds of boost. Yeah. So I mean, we, I think it'll make, I think it'll make 200. It'll be right at 200, we get 20, 22 pounds. Yeah. That's like all we need to be 124, oh, yeah. honestly. I think so. That's even overkill a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I mean, 100 per hole is not bad when you're messing with some janky ass two cylinder. Yeah. Yeah, I say, so obviously we're calling it. So let's uh let's plan another date since we are gonna miss the race because they canceled it anyway. So let's just uh plan a date that's convenient for you. We'll get a new spring in there, we'll find the springs wherever they are, AJ. And I feel then, like I've we'll seen them lying like around. Yeah, I can like hell, yeah, I can like let's start at like twenty. Okay, if we can find a twenty pound if spring, they we'll throw it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean like like AJ said it came with a group of springs, yeah. but I never saw them. I have no idea what the PSI rating is for each spring. Yeah. But I mean, if we have to stack them, we'll make something like yeah. It drives so much better now. I think the motor's getting broken. I can hear it. It sounds so yeah. much better. Yeah. So much better. I mean, even on tip-in, it doesn't sound like a dog. No. And when it's revving up, it sounds like an actual car. It doesn't yeah. sound so much like a buzz saw. It's totally different. <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah, let's take it off. Oh, it sounds good. Oh no, it's starting to wane, mister. All right, there you guys have it. Once we unplug the vacuum off of the wastegate, the Hiroshima hair dryer actually started pushing out some more air and well, we landed at 153 wheel and 112 foot pounds of torque. Now we did hunt down the bigger springs. We're probably, yeah, gonna shoot for a 15, 20, 
uh, pound spring, which should let our tuner turn this up to around the 25 area and theoretically should make about like 220 wheel, which 220 wheel in this car that weighs probably around like 26, 2700 pounds, it is more than enough. Like that is uh, overkill for 124 miles an hour. I think we might be able to hit like 140. Who really knows? The salt does take some miles per hour off a of car's top speed. That depends on a lot of factors as well though. Um, and yeah, now that the tune is pretty much out of the way, um, and I mean with the events being canceled and time on our side, you know, I have plenty of time to work out a few little See what I have to deal with while I'm recording videos? Like I, I can't leave the garage open to enjoy the fresh air. Like I just can't because every five minutes some racer decides to just ping off the red line past the garage. Anyways, um, as I was... As I was saying, now with time on our side, I have plenty of time to fix the, some of the more technical kinks in this car. Namely, well, the fire suppression system. Somebody, and I don't know who, ran the fire suppression system with rubber hose. You know why that's a problem? First off, it clearly states in the rule book that it has to be ran in hardline. Second, if fire does actually start and comes in contact with this, this hose will melt. There's no doubt about it. That will beat the whole point of a fire suppression system. So, me and Mr. Hands will have to redo it in hardline. Um, and besides that, nothing really much. I guess we'll just try and get um, somebody out to maybe give it a kind of like an unofficial pre-inspection. Someone who has experience with that sort of stuff. But yeah, besides that, this car is pretty much ready to rip. Unfortunately, it will be a while till we get to see a record run, but you know what? Nothing good ever comes easy or fast. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you know to hit that subscribe button and give me a like. And as always, see y'all in the next one.